this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <coughs> Chuck put the uh, put me to work real hard. Like we want our bulletins, and I don't have bulletins because I don't have my messages. But we did it anyway, didn't we, Mark? So this sermon is not the one on my desk. I can tell you that. But you'll have to put up with me anyway. The feast. Our scripture today shows Jesus in the midst of a crowd of 5,000 plus. You had men and women and children standing there and waiting for Jesus. And when it came time to eat, Jesus told the disciples to feed. To feed them with the food that they have only been able to feed just a few. To fully understand the setting for the events of our text today, <coughs> we need to look back at what prior happened. The earlier verses in Matthew 14 tells us the things that led up to the death of John the Baptist. John told Herod that he should not be sleeping with Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. It is not lawful for you to have her. So Herod had John arrested and thrown into prison. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people, for they considered John a prophet. Now in Mark's Gospel, we hear a few more details leading to John's death. Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and so he protected him. This all came to a horrible conclusion when Herod threw himself a birthday party and the daughter Herodias danced for him. He offered her a reward for dancing and she requested John's head. Now John's disciples came and buried that beloved master with great anguish. Then they went and told Jesus, and that set the stage for today's reading. Now when, you, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there and a boat to a deserted place by himself. Now I know you've done that same thing. You wanted to get away to a deserted place. But when the crowds heard of this, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. Jesus was John's cousin. Jesus was mourning for his cousin John. He wanted to draw comfort from his heavenly father. Yet there was that crowd. Somehow Jesus let his feelings of grief and loss be turned into compassion. Matthew goes on to say, he had compassion for them and cured the sick. Amazing, isn't it? Just amazing. All day he ministered to the crowd. Can anyone doubt how much Jesus loves? And when it was evening, 
the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. What was Jesus thinking? What did the disciples think about Jesus' command? Didn't he realize how many people were there? What he was asking was almost beyond imaginable. And the disciples pointed out just that. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down upon the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up into heaven and he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. <coughs> and those who ate were about five thousand men, women, and children. By the way, do you see that the Jesus actions are the same as our Holy Communion? Have you noticed that? And he took the bread, broke it, blessed it, and he gave it to them. We have two feasts here. One Herod's birthday involving all the important people <laughs> ending in disaster and death. The other involving common people and Jesus, which ended in hunger satisfied and life and love. Amazing. Isn't it? Just amazing. The feed of the 5,000 is the only miracle of Jesus in all four Gospels. We have some who have their own explanations. Some confirm this was indeed a miracle. Others say it was just that people brought out food they had with them and if that was a miracle, it was the people shared what they had with the people around them. A picnic? Give me a break. <laughs> Others say the story was just included to emphasize Jesus' compassion. But that, nothing like this ever happened. Oh, come on. Of course it happened. I had no problem whatsoever in believing the creator of the universe multiplied loaves and fish for a crowd of people. He made the universe, folks. Of course he could do that. And the real question is, what are God's people today going to do in the response to Jesus' command? You give them something to eat. This command to this very day includes the hungry in our world. There were no farms to fill out if you were hungry that day. There was no test to see if you met certain guidelines. Jesus met a need. And he continues to say to his followers, you give them something 
to eat. A few years back, when I was at the Woodland Church, there was no food cupboard in the town of Woodland. Remember, they didn't need a food cupboard in those places. They had two big mills. Everybody was working. They had money. They didn't need a food cupboard. But all of a sudden, they were down to one mill, and that was even closing. They needed a food cupboard. And the Pentecostal church, now I don't need to tell, remind you where the Pentecostal church came from. The pastor there, who was a school teacher, saw a need. And he started a food cupboard. He had so many people turn out for food. They were hurting. Probably for the first time in their lives, they were hurting. And he had to turn the people away. So he came to me, one of three churches in the area, one didn't help. One church didn't help. And I asked the people of our church to provide food. They had more food than they knew what to do with when we put our work together. We didn't ask who they were, where they came from, what form they had to make up. And that still is going on today. But not without the help of this little Methodist church that was having struggling problems of their own. But they filled that need. And there was also a Vineyard Community Church in Wycliffe, Ohio has one of the longest running food pantries in the eastern half of the Cleveland area. For over two decades, this church, with an average attendance under 200, has opened its food pantry every Tuesday evening. Vineyard Community Church, with very limited resources, trusts God to provide and they opened their doors. Each week they served between 100 and 115 people, helping about a thousand people per month. Tuesday mornings at eight, church members and friends began to set them up like we do for our family. The sanctuary is transformed into a pantry. And by Tuesday evening, people in need end the day with food for their families. The church is making a difference. And that's been noticed. Last year, the Cleveland Food Bank, through a grant, provided a walk-in outside refrigerator for that church to help with that pantry. Now I'm asking you folks today, Norma has asked and asked, we got a food little cupboard out here, it's full, but not until today. Let's fill it. Let's overfill it. Because this church is a provider. It can do anything it wants to. It has proven that time and time again. You folks are some of the greatest that I've ever, ever come across. The need is there, folks. 
Talk to Norma after church today. She'll tell you there is a dire need in this area. You give them something to eat. God help us to help others. And we do it in Jesus' name. Jesus, on that day, fed over 5,000 people, fed over 5,000.